Welcome back. Today, I'll be reading for you from Just a Simple Carpenter, Chapter 2. Mary's cousin Elizabeth was old. She was old, and her priest of a husband was older still. Yet, they were going to have a baby. Oh, yes, we all knew the stories of Abram and Sarai. We knew that the Almighty could work wonders, and it seemed that he was creating one of the old age blessings for this old age couple. Old Zechariah was not only too old to father children, but he was also but he had also remained silent for all, from almost the time the news came that Elizabeth would have a child. He had just been he had been performing the temple duties because his division had drawn the lot this particular year. I would have thought the idea of the blessing of a child coming to a couple so long without children should make the old priest shout for joy, but he either could not or would not talk. You can imagine the gossip that all this spawned. Not only did he not utter any words, but he also ran around gesturing like a madman, it was almost as if the Lord had struck him speechless. If it had been me in Zachariah's place, I don't think I could have held my peace. Word of his peculiar behavior arrived in the, in the same messages bearing the glad tidings of the upcoming birth of the baby to the old couple. Mary received the message from Elizabeth with a little trepidation. It seemed that my wife had begun to keep secrets to herself and the letter from Elizabeth disturbed her even more. Joseph, I must go to be with my cousin for a time. Having a baby is difficult even in the best of circumstances, and Elizabeth is well beyond the age of easily giving birth, Mary had told me. I knew that she was not only good with children, but that she could also help in the time of need when Elizabeth's baby would be born. Zachariah was no help at all. He ran around Jerusalem with his mouth bobbing open and shut like a fish out of water and his arms flapping like a young eaglet testing its wings. I wanted to protest. What about our wedding? I wanted to forbid her to go. She would have stayed had I said so. After all, I was her husband, even if we were still in the time of betrothal. And it was possible for her to be and it was possible for her to be delayed in returning until after the appointed day of the official wedding. This was not the way to begin life together. As time, as much as I hated to see my young bride go on such a journey alone, I knew she was right. I could not go with her on this trip, for I still had to finish the etching work on the wedding table if I was to finish it in time. Besides, there was no one to travel with us as chaperone, a detail we could not ignore and keep tongue waggers at bay. Any appearance of impropriety this close to the wedding date would cast a dark cloud over the whole marriage. I was not concerned for myself about such matters. Men would call on me to build their houses, furniture, and cabinets for, for them in any case, as long as my work remained quality. Mary, my beloved flower, should never be subjected to the sidelong glances and whispered innuendos offered by the careless people who lived around us. So we decided that Mary should journey to Jerusalem alone to be with her cousin Elizabeth until the time came for her child to be born. She would travel on the main road by daylight only and remain until she saw that Elizabeth was out of danger. This job normally went to the mother of the woman giving birth, but Elizabeth's mother was three years dead by this time. Mary was the closest female relative capable of helping her cousin through the hard times of giving birth. On the morning of her departure, Mary assured me that all would be fine. The Lord goes with me, she said. He is in control of even what is happening in our lives today. I know, Mary, I know, I said. It's just so hard to see you go without being sure when I'll see you again. Send a message with any news. 
and may all be good news. Yes, my Joseph, Mary replied. I will count the seconds until our wedding night. And she left. I felt that she wanted to tell me more, but did not know how. So she left that way, walking up to Jerusalem without backward glance. My heart felt the pain of the days without seeing her face, without hearing her voice, without knowing that she was only a stone's throw away. Mary had been gone for some time when O'Shea brought tidings from a trading, from a trading trip to Jerusalem. Joseph, my good friend, I smiled and embraced my old friend. How was your trip to Hoshea? Were there many new fabrics for sale at the Jerusalem market? Did you happen to see Zechariah while you were there? Slow down, my friend, Hoshea chuckled. There was a smile on his face, but not in his eyes. You are like a child who has discovered sweetbreads cooling unattended in his mother's kitchen. There is news from Jerusalem. Hoshea's voice Face became a mask of concern. Not all of it good news, I'm afraid. Hoshea proceeded to tell me all that he had learned from his cousin Rajesh in Jerusalem. Zechariah is continuing to perform his duties in the temple even though he cannot speak. The elders are convinced that he has had an encounter with God and it has rendered him speechless. To conserve their precious paper for the pres preservation of the scriptures, and for the mountains of letters they write to one another for no other reason than to make political contacts with, within the priesthood, they've not allowed Zechariah even the smallest scrap of paper. He must communicate with antics, gyrations, and gestures that make him look like a fool possessed of the devil. They're sure, though, that his vision is not one brought on by sin or his life would have been destroyed. Some of the more jealous types in the synagogue have been heard saying that the Lord took Zechariah's voice as a sign that he should be stripped of his priestly position. But the elders have indicated that his vision was one that was so astonishing that it may be months before he is able to express him, himself in words. His wife seems to be his only pride, though. His priestly, duters, duty, his priestly duties seem to be a drudgery that he endures until he can return to his wife's side. Rajesh says that when he went to deliver some cloth to the, the old couple's house, Zechariah was gazing down upon the spectacle of his wife with pleasure and pride. Rajesh says that it will not be long until the miracle of a baby is born to make the old couple even more famous than they already are. Imagine God granting a baby to such an old couple as this, and Zachariah a raving lunatic. Ah, but Hoshea, I, repl I replied, surely you'll remember that Zachariah and Elizabeth have, a have lived a most upright life. Many are the people in Nazareth who have wondered why it has taken God so long to bless them with a child. And now they will not only have a child, but a miracle as well. Hoshea nodded and allowed that I was probably right. Then I could resist no longer. But what of my Mary? Hoshea, did, you see, did your cousin see her when he was in, so busy gawking at her cousin in Zechariah? Well, Joseph, my friend, Hoshea hesitated as he began to reply. His eyes were cast down in reluctance. Come now, I demanded. We've been friends too long for you to treat me with such mysterious words and ways. Then the truth dawned on me. What's happened to Mary? Was she harmed on her way to Jerusalem? Tell me, Hoshea, is my Mary all right? Calm yourself, Joseph. Hoshea almost screamed in my face. He had his strong hands on my shoulders and was shaking me to calm my hysteria. Mary is not injured, but Rajesh said, did say that he saw her. I began to relax, though I could tell that my heart was still beating rapidly from my fear. Slowly, Hoshea continued with his bitter news. I have not yet been able to confirm or deny the reports, though I trust that Rajesh believes that he thinks what he thinks he saw. Perhaps the woman simply looked like Mary. You know Rajesh 
had only met her once at your betrothal. Again, I was growing impatient, but I knew that my friend was trying to buy time, trying to figure out how to tell me something he thought I would not want to hear. Trying to find the right words. Joseph, Joseph Rajesh says that Mary looked to be with child. I thought you said that you and she were abiding by the betrothal rules. Liar, I roared. I could not hold the anger within me. It turned to a rage as the words continued to sink in. Hoshea tried to defend himself, but I would not let him speak. Your cousin Rajesh has always been a liar. He is jealous that I was the one who won Mary's heart as well as her hand in marriage. He, We have pledged ourselves to one another. Mary would never betray me in such a manner. Not to, not with another man. And we have not been together. Your cousin is mistaken. He must be. There is not a more devout woman in the entire district, including her cousin Elizabeth. I will go to Jerusalem. I will prove your cousin to be a liar he is. And then I will have him brought up on charges before the Sanhedrin. For the scriptures say, you will not bear false witness against your neighbor. And carrying on this rumor, this gossip about my wife is the same as bringing the charge against me. When I had spent my energy on my words, Hosea responded, Yes, go, Joseph, go and find out the truth for your sake and your family's. I hope that you find Rajesh to be mistaken, but do not be shocked. It's not the first time that a couple did not wait the allotted time between the betrothal and marriage feast. Or it is not the first time that a young wife imprudently betrayed her husband when she could be easily found out. Because you are a friend of many years, O'Shea, I will allow you to say those things now, I said though, through clenched teeth and a tightened jaw. But know this, neither I nor Mary have broken our vows with one another or any other. I felt my hand tighten around the hammer that hung from a belt around my waist. I will go, and cursed be the man who speaks against me or my beloved. Let's see what happens next time.